audience, pretty bunch of comic creators up on the stage, raising merry hell. So I apologise for the shoddy surroundings. Um, but yeah, we'll get more running. I've got a few uh, questions, bits, and I think there's maybe one or two people in the audience who may have a couple of questions. Um, but first off, I'd like to say. Uh, and a special big thank you and welcome because you are a first for us. We've had quite a few people on the stage and a number of voice actors here over the last few years, but you are a shining ray of hope for a lot of aspiring voice actors in the room right now because you are the first British voice actors we have ever had on this stage. Woo! Woo! That's a momentous thing. When, whenever we've had a lot of voice actors here beforehand, and it's going, well, how would you get into voice acting? And a lot of them would say, oh, move to LA. Move to, move to LA, move, move to wherever. And <laughs> I'm like, kind of living in LA, but you know, the British, and it makes a big difference, guys. It's awesome. Um, oh, God. I, I, I've done all my voice acting here. I haven't gone to LA yet. Um, I'd like to make my mic at some point. Um, but is it all working? Oh, no, yeah, I'm yeah, working. Yeah, no, I'm Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of, um, there's a lot of recording going on in London for, for for, uh, for game voices, and, and with a game like um, well, with the, uh, the Dragon Age franchise, franchise they, um, they record wherever. I mean, I'm, I'll be recording in the afternoon in London, about four in the afternoon, and the director will be directing me from Canada down the phone at six in the morning for her. So, I mean, wherever we are, they will find us, which is, which is good. You make it sound like there's no escape. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's, yeah, I mean, that's kind of an interesting thing, is that um, it's very, very rare that you get uh, in a game as a voice actor to work with another actor in the same space. So for the most, most part, you're exactly, you're on your own, in a little box. A lot of the time, people are talking to you remotely down the telephone line, like, like they did for me. I was in LA, but also they were talking to me remotely. Um, and yeah, we just met today for the first time, although, you know, our characters are in the same game. And, uh, we're not business with each other, but yeah. Here and there you're lucky where you get perhaps a little bit of um, the other character, if, if the other actors recorded their lines that you're interacting with, here and there you've got a line that they'll be able to play back for you and you can respond to that so it's a bit more organic, but a lot of the time you're all, it's, it's cold, you're on your own and just sort of doing your own thing, you're like, well, I think I've got a sense of the character and how he'd behave here, but, you know, you're not hearing uh, the other characters a lot of the time, so it's... it's uh, it's a sad and lonely, lonely <laughs> <laughs> It is, it's a lonely life being voiceover. And, and a lot of the time uh, you don't get the script in advance, you just turn up and you do it. And it's amazing how they put it all together and, and make it all sound so natural when, yeah, you are recording on your own. Um, sometimes, yeah, like I didn't say, you're lucky if they, somebody else has already recorded their lines so you can react to them, but yeah, it's... Um, it can, be, it can be very kind of nerve-wracking, actually, I find, kind of going in. But I like to do a lot of preparation as an actor, and so to turn up into a sound booth, having never seen a script, and just suddenly, right now, do it, it's, it's, uh, it can be quite scary, but I, you just kind of get used to it, I guess, get on with it. Yeah, I mean, that re yeah, it really is the thing, you have very, you've got maybe five minutes, they'll show you, you know, some artwork for the character and talk to you about it. Um, I mean, what is good though is when you've got the creators speaking to you, they know everything about the game, where it's going, what's happened before, what happened years ago, what's going to happen, what might happen down the line, who these other characters are that you're interacting with, so you get a lot of backstory and stuff to work with. Um, but yeah, and then you just sort of take a plunge and hope that it's not too terrible and, uh, and they'll, you know, new answer performance and steer you in the right direction, hopefully. And hopefully you guys uh, like the product. Do you have a to you and your performance? Because if you're going in there cold, and especially, do you record, do you record uh, like sequentially? Do, do you do it in real time as the script is going through? So you do the start of the game at the start and you work through chronologically, or do you just pluck out scenes as and when? It kind of ish, ish, you know, it really depends what they, they may have like a certain sequence in the system that's up, perhaps they were dealing with that earlier on, you know, it's, you know, it's almost like the old sense of like to, yeah, changing files or changing reels kind of thing, so they may be doing this particular sequence now, there's a strange rumbling I can feel through my feet, it's a little disturbing, um, strangely pleasing. Um, but yeah, so it's not always it's not always sequential. I mean, I know for me as a voice artist, I like there's uh, stuff I want to to really project. You know, I want to put that to the end of the session to save my voice, sort of blow it in the first ten minutes. 
um, which is a lesson you'll, you can learn the hard way uh, as a voice actor and then suddenly you realise you've got one room left but you've established a character speaking like this <laughs> you can't carry on <laughs> and you've got another three hours left <laughs> so um, yeah and drinking lots of water is good Speaking yeah, you can never be running to the toilet every half an hour. Absolutely. <laughs> um, what is it like to the, the story side of things? Because, um, for example, if we jump on Dragon Age as a, as a specific thing, Adam and you in particular, um, there's kind of a. I'm going to try and keep it as spoiler free as possible, but I'm going to assume everyone's played Dragon Age 2 and just deal with it. Damn it, Anders. Anders as a character has a bit of a character twist towards the end. How, at what point were you aware of those actions? Had you seen the whole script before you started recording? No, not at all. So you just kind of like, uh, uh, today you're going to blow shit up. No. Uh, oh right, so now everyone's going to hate me. Right, okay. Yeah. Damn it, Anders! Never, never know in advance. And I guess, I mean, it's quite clever of them to do it that way because uh, the, I'm, I'm quite gobby. I'll probably end up accidentally putting something on Twitter or something. Uh, <laughs> So uh, it's probably wise to not give too much of a game away. When you're signing up to a project, um, how much do you know of the project itself beforehand? Because you mentioned you just see the character and the script just before you start to record. When you're going in for uh, your auditions, when you're going into uh, and, and just having the, the, the project itself detailed to you, how much do you know about what's going on? Um, for instance, I mean, again, to touch on Dragon Age, it's, it was already had uh, an incredibly successful first game, and then it was bringing on the sequel. Did you know much about what you were letting yourselves in for at the point when you, you started recording? Found girls. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were, you the, were you the first I mean, one? I, well, I worked on Origins, I did yeah. some ancillary characters for Origins, but um, well. in terms of the audition, I mean, my, most of my auditions and you know are, are done from home. I have a little booth at home, and, and I get emailed. There'll be a character breakdown, usually a little bit of artwork, a little bit of biography, and there'll be a handful of lines, you know, there may be anything from sort of five to twenty lines. And, you know, I'll just come up with my own interpretation of that brief and then lay it down and then email it off. And it goes up into the ether and hopefully somebody um, somebody likes it, you know, and you get the job or you don't sort of thing. But it's there's uh, oftentimes though, you know, they might have um, it might be as little as, as one line description, you know, and it's like you had no idea because you're not going in to meet the people for the most part, uh, the casting directors for these things. So it's not like they can go like, well, yeah, try it a little bit more like this. You've just got to go and just give it a whirl. So there's like only a few lines and you can give it a couple of different, you know, do it a couple of different ways. But otherwise, it's just sort of taking a stab in the dark and, and hoping, hoping it uh, sticks, you know. Uh, you mentioned um, that a lot of time you'd be going in cold and Adam, you were saying that you like to do a lot of preparation. Um, mostly the, the two don't go hand in hand a lot of the time, so what do you do when you're in the booth and how do you uh, prepare for that character considering you've got such, such limited time to, to really get your, your claws into it? Yeah, I was getting tired. Um, well, I mean, uh, always, uh, I mean uh, whenever I'm going to do a voiceover, whether I know I'm going in for one hour or I'm doing a four hour session, I, I make sure I do a proper warm up so that I know that if I'm needed to scream my head off for an entire hour, I can do it. Um, <laughs> And um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I still consider myself relatively new to doing this. I've been doing it for probably, uh, three, three and a half years, something like that. And um, I mean, uh, working on Dragon Age Origins was one of my first games, and uh, and you just get thrown in the deep end. You just, it's just you have to do it now. And sometimes when when starting out, you're doing if you're not playing one of the main characters in the game, you're often then doing maybe 10 or 15 very small characters, but you want to make them different. So you just have to, you know, give, just, just give it a go. And if they don't like it, maybe they'll just redo it anyway with someone else. But I mean, yeah, just dive in and have a go. How does it work in terms of finding your voice? You're talking about playing many different characters, and on Dragon Age especially, in, 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 uh, Dragon Age a lot of the games that you guys have done, even within the same game, you're playing multiple characters. And as a player, it's interesting when you do eventually go, wait, wait a minute, that, that's him as well. How do, you, how do you find your different voices? Because it, there must be a fine line between acting multiple different parts and then just putting on different same voices to try and give each character a specific sense of, of self, really. Um, well, I guess, I mean, luckily with the games, they, they and try and spread you out so that you're aspect. not kind of, really hopefully not talking to yourself too much. Oh, yeah, because it's a tutorial, isn't it? Yeah, Gareth's lost into these decks. 
with with Andy the same time too. I mean, I had to go for the role for someone else. And I think, and I didn't actually audition for Andy because I guess they considered my voice to be similar to the guy who plays Thor. Um, and, yeah. uh, and I guess from working on Origins, they probably already considered that to be my audition. Um, but <laughs> obviously, things have been different in, <coughs> in London than they are in LA. <laughs> Season. <laughs> um, sorry, what was the question? Again? <laughs> <laughs> Giving you two different voices and characters. Um, I know. Just, you just have to practice and just give it everything you've got. I mean, uh, it, it's, it just takes. Uh, you just, yeah, get your balls out and do it. Um, beautiful analogy. Do you have a, an arsenal of, of different voices that you're able to, to bring out with characters, or do you try and bring something new each time? I think uh, most of the work I've done is uh, because I'm, I'm being employed because of my neutral English voice. Um, and uh, and then, so anything else that I do other than that seems to be kind of the smaller, smaller parts. Um, I actually did some, I did some American voices in the Dragon Age games, which no one's commented on. I, I, maybe they've just not found them, or maybe they were cut. Uh, I haven't found them either. <laughs> um, but um, but no, it's, it's, nice when, it's nice when people turn around to you and say, Oh, that doesn't sound anything like you. That, that, I mean, that's a big compliment. They were like, I never guessed that was you. Um, Absolutely. I mean, yeah. I think that's, that's the best compliment you can have. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, if, um, for me, in terms of, of games, for the most part, I'm not, I don't get to use my own, my own accent. So it's nice, it's nice when something like um, uh, Fenris, you know, in Dragon Age comes along, or, or Balthier in Final Fantasy, where then I was encouraged to use my own voice. Which is really refreshing because most time I'm like, most part I'm doing you know Russian accent or American yeah. accent or something you know and then in terms of finding different characters then it's like you got a, a photo so I'm not looking at you guys at all <laughs> uh, you know photo is always a great starting point you know and if you've got some guy who's like a you know pretty big menacing type dude you know unless you're looking for some comedic value obviously you're going to try and pitch it down a little bit and and you know. Uh, that's really all you've got to work with, you know, and then just sort of take a stab. And they'll nuance it, though, they really will. They, I mean, the voice directors are really, really sharp these days, I think, on, on, on the games, because they have so much more knowledge than, you know, we'll ever pick up in that brief time that we're there. So, so they'll kind of push you, like, yeah, okay, maybe you're sounding a little bit too similar to something like that, you know. But otherwise, it's, yeah, it's, you've just got to come up with stuff and, and uh, let them uh, tweak it. I had to do a, a, a French accent in the um, uh, the DLC for uh, uh, Dragon Age 2. I think it's in Mark of the Assassin. It's the worst French accent I've ever heard. I don't know if it's in there, uh, if, if you come yeah. across it. Is it? Yeah. Well, I think that's me. It, it, was, it, was, it was, I was, I thought it just sounded German. I, I was all of myself, but, but Caroline Livingston, the, uh, the director, was like, no, it's good for me, it's fine. <laughs> Um, I'm going to keep going indefinitely, to be honest, because I just find it quite frankly. Um, but I'm guessing there's one or two people out here who have a few questions, and so the hands are going to go before I've even finished my sentence. <laughs> so I'll start here first, and I'll work my way around. How did you actually get into voice acting? Yeah. Nah, it's cool. I started my career in South Africa. Um, I made a. Uh, Data myself here. Yeah. I made a cassette, <laughs> demo, which, I, which, I, which I did on one of those old little uh, you know, playable cassette goodies with a handle that came out like this. I These have uh, And um, yeah, I just did some funny voices that I I thought were kind of different and unique and stuff. And that was me just messing around. It wasn't like I was going to meet an agent or anything like that at this stage. Um, at that stage, I was at drama school, and then I was lucky in my third year of drama school. Um, I uh, was signed by an agent and they handled uh, voiceover as well and uh, they took me to get a professional demo and um, yeah pretty much pretty much from there you know I was I was I was lucky with the agent I signed with but I was also lucky I think in terms of the voice I ended up having and and uh, you know I guess training and stuff at, at drama school and then and then also the fact that I am an only child, I think, contributed to me creating characters and character voices, like copying them from TV and that, and that sort of thing. So I had um, so you had someone to play with. 
Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I created a few people, yeah, that sort of little collection of characters, which, which I, don't, I don't have go-to characters really, um, but I did then and it at least gave me a sense of a, a variety of characters, yeah. Just interesting, you mentioned that um, you said you were lucky in the voice you ended up with. Have you noticed your own your natural speaking voice changing over the time, over the, over the course of your career as you've been working on so many different voices? Not, not with regards to my career, but with regards to where I am geographically. Mm -hmm. So if I'm in South Africa, I sound quite a bit more like this, kind of a bit more South African, where it's a bit flatter vowels, and I'm very lazy, and I'm kind of talking like this, and I'm hanging with my South African friends. And then, then I come here, and you know, after two minutes, I'm talking like this. <laughs> and, um, and I think, I think here, here and there, it's, I have to remind, here's the thing that gets me, like living in LA, I've been there for eight years now, and and then there'll be, I'll come across a line, a word, in something or other, and I'm like, shoot, I can't, I'm not 100% on the pronunciation, if this is American pronunciation or if this is British pronunciation, you know, and that, that, that scares me a little bit, you know, it doesn't happen too often, but once in a while I'm like, oh man, I'm, gonna, I'm actually not, I'm going to have to check that out. <laughs> See, I find it very annoying when I'm being corrected by someone who's American who wants me to pronounce something, even though I'm doing an English voice, they want me to pronounce, they want me to do the American pronunciation, and I'm like, no. No, there we go. <laughs> no but there, there is that, and it's tough. It's tough because sometimes, I don't know, there'll be like the odd word, I mean, this is a bad example, but for instance, say fast and fast, you know, they really want, because they want uh, continuity across the game, and perhaps we're like one or two British voices in, in a game that's otherwise American, it's, they want that continuity, it's, it's tough sometimes, you know, it's, uh, but it is, yeah, sometimes you have to make concessions, which is, yeah. Hello, Pina. Hello. <laughs> um, is it strange for you? No, I, I just saw your t-shirts and this cat sanctuary. Um, do, you play the games <laughs> do you play the games that you voiced and is it strange to hear your own voice back to you? That's why I asked you, Valentine. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I generally have a go on, on most of them. Um, and, um, I'm so jealous of it is a first, is, I, when, I, when I first heard my voice back on uh, the, the Ostagar prisoner in, in Dragon Ball, <laughs> the first character heard came back to me and, um, and I couldn't believe what they'd done. I thought, Damn. you know, I'm much better looking than the guy who's <laughs> here. I mean, what, what on earth? <laughs> this little ginger bald guy going to play in his pants. Um, and that's you, the naked uh, man. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of fun. It is really nice to kind of think that, yeah, I, I've been. Um, I turned into this computer sprite. Uh, no, I, I, I was quite fond of him. Yeah. I have no idea that was him. The first, the first uh, game I tried to play <coughs> uh, to hear my voice was um, Goldeneye uh, Rogue Agent or something. Is that right? Something like that. Uh, James Bond game, you know, and I was, I was, um, geez, no, Blofeld, number one, I think they called him in the game. Um, so, I mean, that was fun for me because it was like, you know, you get to voice this sort of iconic role, you know, and, and try and do a little bit of a voice match. Um, so, I think, yeah, I played the game and a friend of mine had a PlayStation, but I'd never picked one up before. It made me sound like I'm sort of in my 80s. <laughs> I didn't have a console at the time and I picked up the controller and it was just terrible. It was absolutely awful. I kept dying and dying. I never got to my character. I never I never got to my I, I gave up. But he didn't, I, he didn't have a, a, a memory card or whatever he could lend me, so I couldn't save. So I wasn't able to, I just had to play live as it were, so I just I would have like a, <laughs> like a two hour session like come on, come on. I had to get past the whole thing where you keep sticking your head out and the thing is shooting you and stuff and I just never really got to, the, to that, that guy. But in terms of hearing it, it's kind of cool, I, I, a lot of the time because I've, you know, I've done um, quite a few games and you can't, I mean I could get them all I suppose, but like trying to find them, a lot, a lot of times I'll do a bunch of different characters and they're peppered somewhere and I don't know where they're going to turn up in the game, you know, so uh, I kind of rely on, on you guys a, a little bit to, you know, create these sort of fan bits and stuff and whatever and then I'll see them on YouTube and I'll be like, oh, that's brilliant, that's so cool, you know, and a lot of times, I don't know what, like, like you're saying, you don't know what they're going to look like sometimes, so it's kind of fun to see, yeah, it's pretty cool. So I, I, I mean, I haven't been doing I haven't been doing voiceovers on games for that long, so I'm still I still get very excited when I when I see my my, my characters coming up. I'm, I'm guessing probably after about ten years, I'll be like, uh, Dragon Age 12, great, <laughs> brilliant.
<laughs> you want, man. You want a franchise. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think I'm just last that long. Very <laughs> Sorry, I'm going to be boring and ask a question like keep asking voice actors just because I think it's quite a, a good one to get interesting answers. So, um, aside from the usual, like, you know, doing theatre kind of studies oh, no, and, it's fine. and getting it's a, an acting yeah, background, yeah, how much? what's the one Altogether? lesson that you've it's learned in your career, career or especially for you, Adam, in this kind of new... Uh, roles that you've been doing, what's the one big lesson that you pass on to any other aspiring voice actors or actors out there? Sorry, what's the one big minutes lesson? Left. Left. Yeah, sorry, what was the one big lesson that you picked up in sort of like starting out or in getting into the his career that you would want to pass on to other actors and voice actors for the future? <laughs> uh, Take notes. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, a lot of, you know, in thing about getting into voiceovers, uh, it's, it can be a very close shop. The same as theatre, the same as TV or film. And some people just seem to work a lo lots in one field and never in anything else. And, and I've been very lucky with voiceovers that for some reason um, my voice has been liked by a couple of particular studios who seem to keep getting me in. And, and that I have been able to go in and, um, and they'll just go, right, I know you're only going to be doing this character, but we suddenly got these three other ones that we want you to do today because we've got time to do them. Um, and this one's got to be American, this one's got to be West Country, this one's got to be London. And to just be able to go, yeah, fine, I'll do it. Just, just yeah, and, and even if you end up doing not as good a job as you hope, but it's having a lot of it's about having a positive attitude to just go, I'm um, yeah, I'll do it. You know, and don't cause people problems and don't be a don't be a diva. And, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I will just mention uh, yeah, two things because yeah, I mean, we can have a whole discussion about exactly that, and it's cool, it's it's interesting stuff for sure. Um, I would say get get practice working in front of the microphone. You know. Um, so whether that means uh, uh, finding a class where they, they teach, you know, I don't know, commercial voiceover even, or, or microphone technique, or, or maybe there's a singing class where you get to work on microphones, so being able to handle microphones, you know, you know, not to pop and you're sort of speaking past it and that kind of stuff, and then sort of proximity to the mic and knowing how to work a microphone a little bit, because you can do stuff even with, you know, USB mics and whatever, and you can get a good sense of that. I think. That's great. Then you also get a sense also then in playing that stuff back of what your voice sounds like because we don't really have an accurate sense because we're hearing it, you know, through, we're not doing the same thing. So when, you, when you've done that, then at least you can start to work on, on uh, characters and where you place your voice. And then the other thing I wanted to say was, yeah, be a good cold reader, um, which kind of runs into what we've been discussing a little bit in terms of the no preparation. Yeah, improv, improv a little bit for sure, um, but being able to pick up because it's this stuff scripted, so it's like, um, and you don't have time to prepare that stuff, so you've got to be a good sight reader essentially, you know, and then make it sound uh, fresh at the same time because there really isn't time to, you know, there might be you know a couple of minutes to find the voice, but then you're going. It's not like you've got the lines and then you sit outside for 20 minutes or anything. So if you're a good cold reader and you know how to work the microphone a little bit, you'll be. It's two things that suddenly see like, yeah. Can we hear your French accent? <laughs> <laughs> oh, <fuck her. laughs> Hello, uh, my name is uh, Adam Hauptmann. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds a little bit German. <laughs> <laughs> oh, easy to spot. Oh, I think we do a very comfortable German accent. <laughs> Actually, I saw the cast of a low hello around earlier on. <laughs> Hair flick. I was like, oh god, this is brilliant. They should bring that back. I'd love to do it. They have ways of making your talk. <laughs> Fendra. <laughs> Ask um, uh, who is your favourite character to do other dialogues with? Because the banter in it was uh, in Giant Mage is one of my favourite things in any game, and I was just wondering what one you enjoyed, which banter you enjoyed the most, or who to banter with. Uh, I quite like slacking off Isabella. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Referring to her as you know, slut and all the rest of it, <laughs> and. Um, 
and I liked having banter with my hand in the booth, <laughs> pretending to kiss the <laughs> female, but just kissing myself. I want to see that it's okay. So this is a female version, all right? And this is the male version. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> and I giggled, I giggled for about two minutes and we were a few takes. But it's good, it's very forward. Yeah. No, it is, it really is. I can't think, I can't think. I, we, we have a little bit of grief, didn't we? Yeah, we, we're not, we're not chummy. I liked, uh, I liked, uh, I liked the little banter we, we ended up having, so that was, yeah, that was fun, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Simon Bailey, so I'm a little bit gorgeous, but uh, oh, sorry. I've actually no, no, maybe I've forgotten what I was going to ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, call it. I've got a question for Dr. Consort. It's alright, take your time. <laughs> 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 well, mine's a nice, easy, quick question. Both of you simultaneously, majors or templars? <laughs> majors. Templars. <laughs> um, hi, this is, not, this is uh, two questions for Adam. Um, I've, never, I've never played any of the Dragon Age games, so I'm surprised no one's mentioned your latest role in Xenoblade Chronicles. Right. Um, so I was wondering, um, when you got the character of Shulk, I was wondering how you managed to get the role, um, whether it's auditions or um, you got cast in or something like that. And also, uh, what was it like to name Shulk as well? What do you mean? Um, <laughs> Where I've done uh, quite a lot of games and did all the, the Dragon Age games, and uh, <laughs> they uh, they they just got me in for a voice. So I'd already been I'd already started recording uh, the Tintin game, and um, and so they, they su I suddenly thought, oh right, Adam can do younger sounding voices, and so they wanted they wanted me to do some short, and uh, yeah, I, I just went in. Read a, read a page of, of text and, 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 and got it and um, yeah it was fun to do it was quite it was uh, it was uh, it was it was just revoicing because it was it was already out in Japan so we just had to revoice it and it was quite nice to have um, a solid block of work uh, which for an actor is you know very very nice <laughs> when you when you're in a sort of doing maybe a day here a day here on a big piece of TV or something to actually be told yes you've got a, a month solid work. That's like, thank God. <laughs> thank the maker. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Maker, no. <laughs> 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 well done. Yeah, but right, okay. I know, you, I know you see each other as professional voice actors, so but you have have you not got tempted to talk to each other as Venice Landers, you know? <laughs> Do you not like change it to me go, you're a dick, you know? <laughs> Also, do you do hugs tomorrow at the signing you're going to do? Or do I have to pay for like a lot of money? <laughs> I, I didn't hear quite all of that. So, uh, we got offers of money for you to give hugs. Uh, request whether you refer to each other as Fenris and Anders and within the character voices as well. And I think, do you, just, do you talk to each other within the, the character voices? I think As Anders and Fenris. Do, do we do that? <laughs> well, at the table, you mean? <laughs> Or just generally speaking. <laughs> In private. Stay away from my fault, bitch. I like fault. It's nice to just wander off somewhere. To <laughs> <laughs> a room by yourself. <laughs> no, I romance Anders so all the way. I romance Anders once I prefer Anders, so sorry. She romance Anders. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. 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 How much money for hugs? <laughs> I'm an impoverished actor. Here. I'm not sure we've got a hugging license in the hall, or not. I'm not sure what we can do. Um, I've just got a, a quick question for both of you, really. Um, you mentioning, um, getting on scene, you do a, a great number of accents, and you said you used to do them a lot, especially when you were younger. And 
the British accent, as well, the British accent, the English accent in, in specifically, is becoming a lot more prevalent in video games these days. Is that a is that something you're, you're picking specifically because people are requesting it, or is it just that there's a great deal more um, British vocal talent coming up through the ranks? It's a good question. I I don't know. You know, I mean, game. I don't know. In terms of in terms of Dragon Age, what they were looking for was was um, at least for me, certainly was British. But um, I haven't noticed. I haven't noticed more. More British characters. Uh, I mean, I've been I've been voicing since I've voiced games anyway since uh, 03. So I mean, in that, in that time, I haven't really noticed uh, like an increase in those. I, it's, it seems like maybe of the auditions I do, perhaps uh, two out of ten uh, characters will be British. You know, the, the rest largely American, maybe one or two Eastern European kind of thing. Um, Maybe that's interesting. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't know. I mean, m maybe it's sort of easier access to British voices as well. I mean, it's it's. I think it's a bit more recently that more games are being made here anyway. But with you know the, the way in the way we record our voices for, for say Dragon Age or well, many many games where you know you can be in different countries, you know, recording it. I mean, sometimes I guess it's probably easier. You know, to, if you're in LA, you just get all the voices in LA, London, everyone in London. But now it doesn't really matter where you are. You can just just so general decentralising of the industry as a whole, yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay, interesting. Uh, let's check for that. Uh, there. Hi, this is a question to Gideon. Um, I'm going to be dating myself, but how many clients did you've done while at work have you had to do the Japanese accent? So how many times what sorry? Since you did Mole Worm and Kill Against the Head. <laughs> to do the Japanese accent. <laughs> I said I was dating wow. myself. Wow, we have a South African in the audience. Um, yeah, he's referring to a play I did. He was actually the f he was the second second professional play I did. Um, wow, that's a long time ago. That's ninety five. <laughs> Some of you weren't even born then. Um, oh, I was definitely. Yeah, I was born. Uh, I mean, so I haven't maybe once. Maybe once. I've done like a Japanese voice once since then, yeah. Not a huge, huge demand. Um, at least uh, the life. Oh, my God, I'm dying. Uh, a bit of casual racism. <laughs> well. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, it shouldn't, it, you know, I mean, you want to get. Um, yeah. I mean, I've, I've had that where I've, I've been doing a game and uh, and a voice actor hasn't turned up to do their bit and uh, and I said, oh, what's it have to be? And uh, oh, wait, uh, one time it was a Chinese voice and I went, fuck it, Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't risk it. <laughs> and another time was uh, like a kind of uh, an Arab voice and again, uh, they didn't risk it. But I, I was doing my best shot. I can, I can, I can order a kebab in, in kind of uh, in an Arab voice. Although I, w I will say, sorry, back to the South, uh, South African thingy. I, I went to two, in the eight years I've been in LA, I've only had two uh, on camera auditions for South African roles. They were both back to back. They were both uh, maybe six months ago. I auditioned for both. I saw maybe a dozen other South Africans at both auditions. Uh, the one went to one of my best mates, um, Cliff Simon, who was a, a bar on stage. I've not heard anything. No, the, I honestly really haven't heard anything. No, and, no, and no. You, you probably wouldn't hear until sort of a couple of days before when they say, "All oh, right, Dragon Age 3." No, yeah, really. not, nothing to share, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. Which, which we knew. Hi. Um, you said that you obviously you get cast for British voices. I mean, um, is there a demand for like, a range of accents? Like, would you be able to just? Swap in a couple of days between like maybe a West Country voice or a Scouse voice or a Geordie voice. Would you be able to work within that, or is it just a general group chat? Yeah, I mean, with on my uh, with my voice agent. I mean, it's 